Hello, everyone, and welcome to the week ahead. If I could call this week anything um, by one name, I think I would call it resolution. Um, you know, resolution being the process of desiring to resolve things, being the process of evolution through having to work, you know, resolution, not so much like the resolution that we make a, we make a vow or we make a promise, like a new year's resolution. Although in that case, right, when you're making a resolution, you're setting an intention, you're creating a um, choice or a habit or a thought or a thing that you're working towards. And it's ultimately because you wanna resolve something that's not been working, right? If people make a new year's resolution to eat healthy or exercise or you know, grow their business or um, change something in their life that ultimately hasn't been working, the resolution is the choice to make a change. And that's about what this week is. In a way, there are two kinds of resolutions. Those that we make voluntarily through our own free will and those that occur evolutionarily through um, fate, right? Or <clears throat> circumstance. <clears throat> and as we're moving towards this full moon in Scorpio, there may be a sense even in this Virgo time of the things in our lives that are unresolved, the things in our lives that aren't working, that aren't Virgo, healthy, purified, um, feeling uh, clear, right? Virgo has to do with discernment and, you know, it's seen as very logical and analytical, but in a sense, Virgo wants to get to the heart of what it is that is separate from God, right? Separate from our connection to God. All things that we move through in our life experience are essentially, in a way, moving us away from or towards that sense of connection to God, our connection to source, our connection to life, our connection to love. And if we make a resolution, essentially we're pointing that direction back towards the good, right? There's a, there's a passage that I like that in sense, um, I've heard this from the gospel of Mary, where it's talking about how she referred to God as the good and how Mary's perspective was that she was moving God, moving towards the good, right? And we're, it's not just seeing the good in our circumstances, the good in what we deem good, you know, like um, it's seeing the good in the difficult. It's seeing the good in the suffering. It's seeing the good in everything. Ultimately, this is where we start to see and perceive the experience of a saint, saintly people who reflect to us the ability to see the good in everything. I was in church this morning and, um, oh, I don't know why this, this makes me want to cry. Um, the man sitting next to me in the back of the service when there was a time when they asked people if they had prayers, you know, he raised his hand and he, um, he said that he was really praying for a job, that he just wanted to be able to work, that he had been out of work and homeless for a really long time. And that his prayer was just to be able to find some work that he could do. And I felt so touched by that because I also had been sitting next to him and watched him when the offering plate came and he gave money to the church. And that was such an interesting thing to me. One might see that as like, why would you do that if you're homeless, if you don't have a job, if, you know, 
But that was such an affirmation of his faith. You know, and such a reflection of his trust and his, and I always put money in the basket as, as long as I have, you know, it's like, as long as I have a life that I'm living, we have something to give. As long as there is breath in our bodies, there is something good to partake. The good is God present in our lives. And during heightened periods of growth, of trauma, of struggle, of suffering in our lives, it can be easy to mistake or to misperceive what is happening and only see it from the absence of good, right? But there's a line in A Course in Miracles, which is one of my favorite things, which is um, all things are working for our good. And the question that that particular paragraph asks is, what would you do if you knew if you understood that all things were working towards our good. So while we're headed into what it looks to me to be a particularly strong and emotionally charged eclipse window, one where the presence of loss, the presence of revolution, resolution, things ending in our lives that are very deeply tied to our identities, to our physical, financial, emotional, relational security. Things changing through the death and rebirth process that isn't always what we would like. One of the things that I heard, the story um, which really touched me was about preparing for the birth of a baby girl, one that had been so deeply desired and wanted, and then ultimately finding out also this baby girl has Down syndrome. And, and the pastor related the story to that, um, you know, when you're preparing for a trip to Italy and you're so excited to go to Italy and having the realization that, um, we're actually going to Holland. We're actually in Holland. It's not going to be the thing that you might think that you're doing with your life. And, you know, there's so much out there in the New Age movement about manifestation. And I'm certainly one of those people who believes that our, our prayers and intentions can move us in the direction of a vision that we have, but there's also the reality that we don't always get to go or we don't always get what we want or what we were wishing for. It doesn't always work out that way. And in many ways in the, it not working out the way that we wanted, there can feel a lot of pain. I've been facing this in my own life, just the pain of like, this isn't what I asked for. This isn't what I wanted but this is what God gave me. And this is good. There is good in what has been given. There is good. Even in our struggle, we don't often know how the good is being built in us and through us. We don't always know how the character of our strength and our capacity is being developed through what we're facing. And I often get to see this in sessions with people where I can realize that my direct experience with struggle or my developed experience with compassion or my awareness of something through my own challenges is and becomes a gift for someone else in a way that I couldn't have imagined. And while I could say that's a blessing, I get my life gets to be of service to a higher good that I couldn't have said, yes, sign me up for that lesson because that's what I want to learn. You know, I wouldn't have done that. 
but I can say thank you for letting me be of service. Thank you for my life being a vehicle for a change which changes my heart ultimately, but also um, gives me a strength and capacity that I get to share with others. So I'm, I'm obviously sensitive to and attuned to the, the very nature of what these processes do to us, how they shed our skin, they transform our perceptions of what is wanted and what is unwanted, our choices around what we do with ourselves through the presence of not being able or being in the story that we thought we would be in but having to reshape the narrative of our lives to hold a more loving perspective, to hold a perspective that allows for Scorpio, right? The death and rebirth process to help to elevate us. Scorpio is often one of the most misunderstood signs and it's one of my favorite signs because it's often rejected, you know, but it's like, it's the only sign that has three levels of consciousness. We can attain the level of the scorpion. A lot of the times we're in the level of the, the phoenix, right? And then there is the level I've heard of the eagle or the dove, right? Which is surpasses through the alchemical process to the understanding that allows for a higher vision, right? Like Mary is saying, to see the good in all things, you know. And as we're walking through the week this week, you know, we can put our good goggles on, um, taking extra special care to recognize that what we're going through is for a change. And that it's a part of a resolution to resolve things, a revolution that is amassing a field of change within the world, amassing a change within our own lives that is feeding actually the ground of what we might call a new paradigm or a new, a new thought system, what we might seek towards a new vision for our lives, a new reality for our lives, can't ever come through past conditioning, but it can come through the releasing of the past, the reconciliation of the past. It, we can't ever change the past, nor can we necessarily um, change the future, right? None of those things are a part of our domain. The present moment is the place where we can change. And a lot of what I've been seeing relative to the changes that are healing is facing the deeper places where our fear, our distrust of life or others, our past hurts and conditioning become the blocks to where we want to create something new. And if we want to create something new, we ultimately have to shed those identities. We have to shed the behaviors that those uh, thought patterns set up inside of our lives. We have to create a new pathway for, for something else to emerge. And maybe that's a resolution to give up something. You know, what do you give up when you surrender, you know, whether you surrender an addiction or a thought process or a hurt or a resentment, you know, it's like, if there's anything you were going to do in this ritual, uh, in a ritual, you know, I don't usually recommend people do rituals around eclipses, but if you were to release something that it's just like, I just can't take this with me anymore. 
You know, I once went to a, gr a grief ritual um, by the late Sabone Fusome, and she said of the black area of the ritual, you know, don't give up anything here that you aren't willing to fully let go. And I gave up my career as a financial advisor. I gave up my work. I gave up my marriage. I gave it up to that part of the, of the thing. And no less than a year later, those things were gone from my life. Gone, like long gone, like not to come back, not to hold on to, you know. So we have to be careful of what we're willing to let go of. We, we have to really understand if we're willing to let it go that we are willing to part with it in the ways. And as we come to this cycle with the end of Venus, you know, she's, she's moving through a square to Neptune this week. There's, there's clarity coming where we've been in a lot of doubt or indecision about things. There's emotional clarity coming. I think the emotional clarity is what we crave most. There's resolution coming, right? Through the, the release of things that we are maybe overdone in resolving or letting go. And also the things that we hold on to because we are not ready, you know? And often those are the things that get taken from us uh, before their time. This is where grief happens for people. And especially like when people lose children or family members, young, you know, or we lose things unexpectedly and there's the shock of the loss. Um, and it also it opens, the loss itself opens a gateway or a doorway to something new. It begins a process of revolution, of evolution in our lives that if we're open to it, can evolve us through our emotional body this week with both Venus and Mars in the sign of cancer by the end of the week. We're working with moon, moon masculine feminine energy, moon ruled in that um, the moon will be changing the, the face of that emotional dance between the masculine and feminine energies, right? And we're getting towards that part of the cycle of the Mercury retrograde where the intensification of that resolution, right? We want to resolve things. Often Mercury retrogrades bring forward things that need to be repaired, replaced, reviewed, revised, resolved, right? That's why resolution is the word of the week. And as we're resolving things, as we're fixing things that have broken down, as we are re replacing, returning, reviewing, uh, redoing, rescheduling, having to work through the many different moving parts and pieces of our life. May we have the time and the ability to sit with ourselves, our, the changes, the shifts, the beginnings, the endings, the culminations of cycles and resolve to a new faith a trust in the good to guide us where we're meant to be, a trust in God to give us exactly what we need, exactly when we need it. Not to feel so far from clarity that our emotions don't have the time and space to catch up with us. So with that, my friends, I hope you have a beautiful week ahead. Remember with eclipses to take a lot of time and space. Try not to over 
uh, burden your schedule. And if it is, if it is to be patient and kind with yourself and others, to be slow uh, uh, to anger and quick to forgiveness and to be steady in the resolution to keep love, to keep the good that is guiding all of us at the center. All right, my friends, as always, if there's anything that touched you in this video, please leave it in the comments below. Um, please like and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy receiving these weekly updates that notification bell will let you know when I publish my weekly video. And as you can go to astrologywithmichelle.com to book a one-on-one -on -one session with me to sign up for my monthly class. I just published the month ahead for the month of May. So you can listen to a deep dive video going into all the aspects this month and tuning into the energetics. There's a lot of power coming through this month ahead. And this week is just the beginning of that source of power. So much love to you all and bye for now.